Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whenever you're viewing. Joe Davis here from Southern New Hampshire University, Justice 103. We're going to talk about Discussion 1-1 and the rubric. This is the first assignment for us. Um, what we're going to cover today are two separate things. We're going to talk about the discussion rubric for all discussions, then we'll break down Discussion 1-1. To find the uh, information for discussion, or the discussion rubrics, we're going to go to the home page of our Blackboard shell. We're going to click on course information, then we're going to click on assignment guidelines and rubrics, then we're going to click on discussion board rubrics. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, here we are at the home page, if you will, with our announcements. We're going to go to um, course information. We're going to click on that. We're going to go to assignment guidelines and rubrics. Click on that, and then we'll go to Discussion Board Rubric. Okay, here is the Discussion Board Rubric that we were looking for. Um, take time to review this, because if you just follow the rubric, you'll, you'll get a good grade. And uh, if you don't, you'll really, really struggle. So there are two parts to it. On the left-hand side here, it says, for your initial post, you have to have one initial post, and that initial post has to be done by Thursday nights at 11.59 p.m., okay? And that's for modules 2 through 7. In module number 8, the last module, there's a discussion for you only. You have, excuse me, a little longer till Saturday night, okay? Take into consideration materials such as the course content, what other discussion boards uh, students have said from current module, previous modules, and then of course make sure you're using appropriate uh, APA format uh, citations for your work. The second half of that, <coughs> this assignment of the rubric, is that you have to reply to two additional students. Uh, a little clarification here, I'll try to reply to everyone at least the first couple of weeks to your initial post. If you reply back to me, that doesn't count as one of your two replies to fellow classmates. By the same token, students can read someone else's post, see my comments, and reply to my comments too. But you have to reply to two different students. You have to do that by Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. The rubric is wrong here. It is um, 11.59 p.m. in your time zone. It hasn't been updated yet. Okay, and that's for modules two through seven. When we get to the last module, you have until Tuesday night at 11.59, the last night of class. Okay, and you need to depth, excuse me, you need to demonstrate more depth and thought than simply saying, I agree, you're wrong, and guidance is provided on each of the rubrics. Okay, here are the critical elements. We start with comprehension. We go to, of course, we all want to get an A grade. So you develop an initial post with an organized, clear point of view or idea, and you're using rich and significant detail. And if you're unsure, read several other posts before you reply and get a feel for what your fellow students are writing. That's the best examples I can offer you. Engagement, this is where you're going to reply. Provide relevant and meaningful response posts with clarifying explanation and detail. Uh, what I see that uh, kind of hurts students is they'll, they'll reply, but they'll ask them three questions, or they'll write a very lengthy run-on sentence that's a question. That's not a relevant and meaningful response. That's a question. Okay? And then finally, writing me mechanics. I know some of you uh, work very hard. You'll be trying to do this on your uh, smartphones, uh, perhaps on a tablet. Um, that's okay. But you still have to remember capitalization, punctuation, grammar, sentence structure, and syntax. So you have to write a post, write posts that are easily understood, clear and concise, proper citations, and with no errors in the citations. All right. So that's how to get the most possible points. If we go down here to needs improvement, you develop that initial post with a point of view or idea, idea, but you have some gaps in the organization. You jump around a little bit. Okay. A timeliness. That initial post must be submitted by 11.59 p.m. your time on Thursday night if you want to get maximum points here. OK, 
Okay. If you are one day late, you lose almost half of the points. If you are two days or more late, you don't receive any points. Okay. The reason for this is the object of the discussion is to replace as if we were sitting in class. And, and so if someone comments, writes an initial post or a reply, you need to reply back. Uh, if you don't do that, if you try and do everything at 1140 on Sunday night, it's as if you were sitting in the room by yourself talking. So hence, you get no points for that. Uh, engagement provides somewhat relevant response posts with some explanation and detail. Look down here, it says writes a post, writes posts that are understandable using proper citation methods where applicable, but with a number of errors in your citations. So that should give you an idea of what the discussion rubric undergraduate for all discussions requires. Okay, now let's move to the second half of our little PowerPoint presentation. That's explain the differences between determinant and indeterminate sentences. Okay. The prompt is asking for an explanation. So the first step is you're going to have to define what those terms are. You're going to need to define determinant and indeterminate sentencing. The second step is you're going to have to explain the differences, perhaps with some type of an example. Okay, so when you write about a determinant sentence means you're going to go to prison for five years, means you're going to prison for five years. And then if you're going to write about the indeterminate sentence, and you're going to say it may say three to five years. Okay. Now identify which one you think is more effective and why. It, again, two parts of this. The first is you have to identify which uh, one you think is more effective. So that's a, a statement, if you will. The second part, you have to explain why. And that requ requires uh, analysis and evaluation. So you want to look at factors uh, about rehabilitation or factors about retribution or factors about inmate behavior while in a facility <clears throat> that if there is um, um, an indeterminate sentence for example and the, the inmate misbehaves the, the uh, correction system can go back to court and extend that sentence perhaps. What are the political pressures that we see in uh, sentencing? And so you remember you're now defending your position so these shouldn't be all negative things they should be things in support of it whether or not there should be judicial discretion in sentencing, and finally whether these types of sentencing guidelines may have something to do with racism or the elimination or the, the uh, amelioration of it. Those are just some ideas. There's certainly not all of them. Um, the little bit of music at the beginning was Funk Down Sting. There is no credit required. If you have questions, please keep those cards and letters coming. <laughs>